I'm the operations director at the club. Um, I've been in the role for uh, for a few months now. Started sort of end of March, so pretty much started when lockdown kicked in, um, and the, it's been a very odd start to any career, really. But especially one that where you're you sort of mid global pandemic, and then you you start planning for a behind closed doors biosecure cricket event. So. Um, my, yeah, like I said, my, my, my role is the operations director. Um, so pretty much looking after everything that happens on a daily basis. So not just the cricket side of things, of course, but we have a huge conference and event centre. We've got a hotel on site, a Hilton 150-bed hotel. So uh, everything that kind of goes into that, anything sort of, sort of from a commercial revenue point of view as well, in terms of um, food and beverage and, and, and retail and, and, and clearly... The one that's more relevant at the moment is the sort of the safety aspect of, uh, of everything. When you joined Lancashire, you mentioned it was kind of mid-pandemic, mid-lockdown. So was there a period of time when actually you didn't actually see any of your new colleagues? Most of my interactions with a lot of my colleagues have been via Teams or just a phone call or Zoom quizzes. We've done plenty of quizzes to sort of keep us going at the start of it. And then as sort of, as sort of business got a real, little bit more serious, it, it, uh, it got more into Teams calls and, and stuff like that. So uh, I've, met, I've, met mo- I've met all my direct reports and I've met a lot, most of the team, but there are still individuals at the club that I've physically not met face to face. So it's a very odd position to be in. And um, prior, prior to that, I worked in Merlin for 15 years. As um, My last role was the general manager Madam Two Swords, and my last day was to close the building. Funny enough, so um, which was a, which was probably one of the worst ways you could ever imagine leaving a fifteen-year career. But um, uh, and then straight sort of from there into into this, where uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still yet to meet everybody. <laughs> so when the uh, idea of trying to stage a biosecure cricket game was, was first being uh, floated around, yeah. Um, kind of what was your initial thinking when you heard, right, we need to perhaps do something that, well, definitely do something that's never been done before? We were actually the ones that really thought about it to start with. So um, sort of the process that we kind of went through, I mean, literally within the first 10 days of me starting, uh, myself and the rest of the executive team at, at the club kind of made an assumption that this might come. We sort of we tried to second guess it a little bit and, and thought, well, actually, if this does happen, if there are sports events held behind closed doors with no fans, we're in a very good position here that to, to host that because of because of the hotel, as I've mentioned, 150 bed hotel on site, Hilton Hotel. So it's a it's a really really high standard hotel, huge conference and event space that holds sort of 2,000 people, a 17 acre site, all secured, all securable. You can lock down the whole site. So actually, on paper, we we thought we were in a really good position to host that. And what we wanted to do was put our hat in the ring and say, "We're up for this. We really want to be. We want to be one of the the, the um, sites that does host if there is if there is such a thing." Um, so we kind of started working on that process about three or four weeks before the ECB even approached us. And like I say, a lot of that was just an assumption that this might come. Um, so that involved me speaking to people from the Premier League, speaking to people from the Bundesliga, speaking to cross sectors. So going back to my old sort of visitor attraction industries and other places um, to, to, to see what, what their plans were and how they went about doing things. So we learned a lot from the Bundesliga, for example. Um, and then, and then, sort of uh, as it as it sort of expected, the call came from the ECB to say, "Look, we're, this is what we think we, we want to do," and they put it out to all counties. So, would would anybody be willing to take this on? Uh, of course, we said yes. You know, for the good of cricket, somebody had to take it on, really, to keep it forward. And we wanted to be that site, uh, so we said yes. We had to submit a plan um, and present that into the ECB, um, uh, and uh, and we were fortunate. Um, to be successful in that, as, as was the Aegeus Bowl and then and then other sites for training as well. How much, you mentioned you, you took a lot from uh, the Bundesliga because obviously yeah. sport behind closed doors started there before it did over here. So just what did you kind of, what did you learn from kind of their experiences of, the, of, of getting football back underway in Germany? So the process we went through is that we created what we thought was a biosecure plan. And, that, and by that, in, in our heads, this was about almost like a you know a bubble if you like a, a real bubble where anybody in it was 100 percent clear of of coronavirus and um uh, and there is no way of that infection being passed and we worked on that plan for maybe a couple of couple of weeks and then and then when we spoke to the bundesliga or i spoke to the bundesliga what was really apparent is that they they seeked 
um, medical advice, which which came to us later through the ECB. And the ECB is fantastic with that. They've given us some really good, strong medical advice. But the Bundesliga were the first people to tell us stuff that that actually a biosecure bubble is is near and impossible because of the way they do the testing and 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 the accuracy of the testing and, and that kind of thing so what they'd worked on was actually players getting tested twice a week strict instructions as to how how to behave the behavior of other people on site so the the cleanliness process what materials to use when when cleaning how regularly you should clean um uh, because if you take the government guidance, it's it's loose for it has to be loose. It's loose for a reason. The government guidance will tell you to clean regularly, for example. But the Bundesliga told us what regularly meant and how detailed that was and the science behind it, and and that that gave us a really good head start. They 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 used a company called Prenetics who do the testing for them. So we kind kind of started investigating that. We started investigating sanitizing uh, zones and temperature checking machines. And then when the ECB came on board, clearly what was really obvious is they'd done exactly the same thing. So they they'd had conversations with the Bundesliga that I think they'd had conversations with sort of Korean baseball teams, and 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 they they'd really gone to town on their their research. And obviously they they had the the benefit of the medical advice as well. And what that did that just stood us in really good stead. Firstly, I think it helped us get get the um, get the approval to be a host site but secondly it meant that we were maybe a month ahead of where we we would have been if we'd have just waited for the ECB to ask us to get started just to explain uh, you might want to uh, I've described it there but in terms of what, what a biosecure bubble actually means because cricket cricket fans know lots of different terms and now they're getting used to the idea of the term biosecure bubble just just kind of at its very basic what does it what does it mean it means that uh, it's a it's a space, it's an island, if you like, that to the best that that's sort of practically possible, um, we've we've checked anything that's coming come in that site, and we check movement within that site to ensure that any any sort of COVID nineteen passing is is minimised or mitigated. Now that that's that doesn't mean that it's an it's an impossible piece. It, you know, there is still an opportunity to do that. But if you if you take what we have versus what you would get in your own home or what you would get in a supermarket or on or, or on the streets. This, this is on a different level to that. Um, so what that really means is that anybody coming on site must have been tested and you have to obviously be clear of that test. You then go through a health screening questionnaire, so it's an app on your phone, um, and you fill out a questionnaire on a daily basis. So the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, I fill out this questionnaire um, uh, and that goes to a team of doctors the doctors read everybody's questionnaire on a, on a daily basis. And again, I can't get on site unless those doctors say, yes, I'm, I'm approved to be on site. Once I get on site, I have uh, my temperature checked. So all the, all the obviously relevant documents to say that I'm, I'm allowed on site are checked as well. But then my temperature is checked twice uh, for me to get on site. Again, when you're on site, there are um, somewhere in the region of 40 sanitizer machines, uh, an endless amount of PPE around for you for you to um, for you to use, um, and then and then kind of what we what we've done is is not really rested on that and said well that's brilliant that's great everyone can kind of mingle now within the island there are there are mini islands so players and match officials for example are allowed in one zone and and. I, for example, or anybody else on site, we can't mix with, with within that zone. So although I'm in the island, I'm only allowed within certain parts of the island. The players and the match officials are only allowed within certain parts of the island. And even within that group, so if you take England or the West Indies, for example, in the scenario we've got now, um, they still have to remain social distance. So the, the West Indies and England teams can't can't mix. The match officials can't mix until, until they're actually on the field of play. Um, and the England guys uh, again can't mix at all so even the changing rooms they're sat separately um for dinner or for breakfast they're sat separately and um, so it's 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 almost an extreme version of of what we're, we're seeing really now around the, the sort of the streets in terms of what what old trafford what emirates old trafford looks like now steve the hotel who's in there now what does the what does the point look like what's what's going on kind of at the minute just just give us a little insight into it to, to, to what it looks like inside. I mean, look, Emirates Old Trafford is a, is a fantastic, fantastic venue, fantastic stadium. It's got an amazing hotel and an amazing conference centre and, and it still looks like a fantastic venue. It still looks like an amazing place. And um, uh, when you, the first thing you see when you drive in are, are, are 
plenty of security, plenty of medical team, uh, tents that you have to go through, you drive through, um, and then you get out and you you make sure that you, you've had your temperature taken. So so that that initial driving process looks very different. Um, uh, the hotel looks 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 no different really, apart from the fact there are plenty of sanitizers uh, around. There's plenty of PPE around. There's plenty of one-way signage. So on the floor there are footsteps. So depending on what zone you're you're allowed in or what what area you're allowed in, there are footsteps that you have to follow, um, and and that that makes sure that you uh, you're sticking to your area. Um, if for whatever reason you veer off path and, and you um, you uh, you don't follow your footsteps. There's a steward there who, who checks your accreditation and sends you back the way you, you came, kind of thing. Um, but no, it, st it still looks amazing, and, and that's I think that's the, the trick here, Scott. Is that is that for, for us uh, as a, as an operator, what we really have to do is is to make sure that safety is the the forefront of our minds and is the number one priority. But for the players coming in and for the um, match officials coming in and the broadcasting broadcasting guys on site, it really shouldn't be the forefront of their mind. So we need to make the site look as normal as possible, as fantastic as it normally does. Um, and sort of behind the scene, this is where this is where the safety sort of kicks in. It's, it, you know, I, I say this a lot, but it's a bit like, you know, if, if we go out for, for a meal, um, we don't want to walk away going, that was a really safe meal. We want to walk away going that was really really nice food so that's the trick that we have to do we ha we have to make this place look as normal as possible knowing that actually um it, it's it's not and is it logistically been quite difficult in terms of i'm thinking particularly steve of the hotel where you've got players in there officials in there broadcasters in there but as you mentioned everyone's assigned to different zones is it, is it quite has it been quite tricky to to organize the layout of the hotel to make sure that everyone is separated because I guess normally on a day-to-day -day basis, the hotel people just kind of just, just wander where they want to wander to a degree. Just mingle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, it has been tricky and it's been a lot of planning and preparation and we've been really fortunate to, to be able to work with the ECB as partners on this. The ECB have been fantastic. So this is not just, we've not just taken this on. We've worked with the ECB to plan and prepare who goes where and where they do that. You know, the, the England team, for example, will have their breakfast in a, in a set room at the same place they'll have their, their dinner that night. Um, so, so everything's been been planned to meticulously. And that's taken, like I said, that's taken about six, eight weeks to do that. We're, again, we're really fortunate that we have such a huge site. Um, the conference centre is massive with... with, with um, with with really really huge rooms and and lots of all all sort of small meeting rooms as well. So every single space we've got has been utilised. Um, the the what we what we're learning we're really early into this, but what we're learning is that people are really well behaved and, and actually nobody nobody seems to be breaking the rules at the moment. Uh, clearly, we've got to be aware of complacency. You know, it's a bit it's a bit like driving your car. You know, when you first pass your test, you're super careful. After a year, you know, you've gone from A to B, and you forgot how you, you forgot how you got there. You don't know how you did it. And and our and our I think our task here is to is to make sure that complacency never kicks in, and and we're forever reminding people to be to be safe. But we had the West Indies on site for two weeks during during an isolation period when they first came into the country, and they were um, extremely well behaved. They they stuck to the rules um, amazingly well. They had breakfast separately. They wore their PPE. They wore their face coverings, um, and and everyone seems to be doing that. Um, each sort of each person coming onto site has gone through sort of a, a piece of training as well, so an educational piece to explain this is what you're going to come into, this is what the experience will be like, rather than just throwing them into it. And everyone's opted into it, so everyone's had to sign a form to say, I, I, I'm happy with this, and, I, and I'm opting in to come into this place of work or this or this environment. Um, so, so hopefully, it wasn't a shock to anybody when they first arrived on site. Having stayed at the Hilton down at the Aegeus Bowl for quite a few games when Lancashire have been playing. I know it's a, quite a big venue there, yeah. but I wonder the addition of having the point, which is enormous, yeah. how, how beneficial is that for you in, just time, in terms of trying to separate people? Hugely. I mean, if you've been in the point, you, you, you'll know how big that is. It's, it's a massive space. And really what we've used it for is, is, um, uh, is actually entertainment. We've ended, up, we've ended up putting a lot of entertainment in there. And what, what was really obvious sort of halfway through the planning of this was, we're keeping people on site for a long period of time. Yeah. People, people who um, we want to make sure have no desire to leave site. 
because that's that you know that could be one of the worst things if, if everyone's so bored that they just want to leave so with the West Indies and the England squads there is uh, you know the points almost been split in half and there are huge entertainment spaces for them they can play basketball they can play virtual golf they can play air hockey whatever whatever that is um, and and just having that space has been brilliant for us we, you know we can feed people in there um, and we can split people off as as and when necessary but I must I must say that even fun so even even playing air hockey is uh, is clean, safe fun. You know, they used to have to sign up before you play. Just to follow a couple of points, Steve. I appreciate you must be busy on the eve of the of the, of the test match. But um, have you learnt from the, the guys down in Southampton? Obviously, they've had the test match already. What kind of feedback have you had from 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 how it's gone down there? I mean, nothing nothing specific really. Um, we've been communicating with them uh, throughout the process. So prior to, prior to, um, the England squad getting down there and the West Indies squad getting down there. And we, we, um, we communicate on a daily basis really. So we have a, we have a daily meeting with the ECB, um, as do, as do the guys down at the Aegeus Bowl. And then, um, uh, I mean, I don't personally have much of a relationship, but our, our team here are vastly experienced. I've known the guys down at the Aegeus Bowl for, for a long period of time. So, so there isn't a day goes by that they, they're not talking to each other. Um, so I think prior to all of this, there was a lot of learnings. Um, you know, how, how do we do food service, for example? You know, we're, we're both used to doing a buffet-style food service where it's a self-serve, and um, that clearly isn't good good enough at the moment. So there's a lot of learnings around there, a lot of learnings about cl- uh, room cleanliness. Um, again, fortunate that, that we both have Hilton hotels, and Hilton brought out a clean stay um, scheme that we both managed to both managed to get and, and use that as a really high standard for us. So lots of learnings, and I think that will continue throughout. I, th- I don't I don't think we are um, we're, we're sort of finished on this. I, th- I think every day is a bit of a learning. Every day we see something and go, okay, well that's maybe not as bad as we thought it would be. So we can relax a little bit there, or actually that's. That's maybe maybe need to put a bit more pressure onto that that zone. So um, it's, it's been great having communication with the the guys down at the AGS Bowl. You, you obviously don't have an on-site golf course down like, like they do in Southampton. No, no, no. We, the, it's the a shame. Entertainment... I've got the clubs in the boot as well, so that'd have been nice. <laughs> But the entertainment factor clearly is uh, is quite was quite intriguing to listen to because I suppose that's one of the basics that sometimes you overlook is how you're gonna how you're gonna keep people sane for a period of time when they're all on site. Yeah, well, it is, and I, I, like, it may be my background. You know, I worked for Merlin Entertainment for fifteen years, so it's one of the first things I thought of. And having conversations with people were looking at, looking at me like I was a madman. I was going, "No, no, we need to entertain people. You know, people are going to want to be entertained. You're going to get to to eight, nine o'clock at night, and you, you're going to be frustrated. And if if it's you know if it's raining, and we know what what that does to the game, if it's raining, then people have got to come inside to something. And and I go back to that point, you know, our, our job is to, to create amazing immersive experiences at, at the site um, and whatever it takes, that's what we should do. Uh, and the, the guys staying on site are, are our guests at the end of the day and um, uh, and everything we, we can do, we should do. And then you just add on that safety element, which is actually we don't want people to leave site. Not, not not because we want we want to re, you know keep them in and keep them closed, but it's safer for everyone to be on site. So um, yeah, yeah, it's it's but it's it's developing each day. Yeah, I don't get to play on it myself, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just have to make up my own games. Just a final one, Steve. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, I think a really uh, proud achievement by everybody, at, not not just at Lancashire but also at, at, down in, in Hampshire as well. But the fact that these two venues and, and, and here in Lancashire we we have one that is able to, to 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 host the volume of international cricket to get the game on. I mean, how proud are you to be part of a club that is able to do that? Yeah, extremely proud. You know, I I, I think it's one of those things that maybe at the moment we don't quite realise. Um, how big this is as an achievement, um, and you know we, we're not we're not there yet, so I won't I won't shout too loud. But um, I think we'll look back on this in a year's time and, and be really proud of a momentous period. You know, the first international sports uh, sports game during a, a global pandemic was held at our site, uh, and, and same for the AGS Bowl. You know, I think everyone involved in that should be really proud and will be really proud. I think at the moment, the workload that's gone into this during a pandemic so where we can't see each other face to face and we're having to do this via team calls everything becomes a lot a lot uh, slower and a lot more a lot more difficult which probably just means they should be even more proud of what they've done the team here are fantastic you know they did they delivered 
amazing events for years and years and years and they did the one love concert under intense pressure and intense scrutiny and and now i'm, I'm absolutely confident they're going to deliver an amazing um test match under intense pressure and intense scrutiny as well so i think it's going to be one of those things that in in a year or two's time we'll all look back on we'll be sat sat down and we'll be immensely proud of everything we've done